Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and today I have a show that I have been kind of thinking about doing for probably a year now, and I'm just finally now getting around to it, partly because I'm lazy, and partly because some of these beers just don't come around at the same time. So finally, I had enough of the beers available to me to do a tasting that I think would be really cool. Uh, what I have here are a bunch of goos, or gers, or however you want to say it. I'm going to say goos. Uh, they are, uh, gooses um, are blends of uh, Lambic beers. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit. We've done shows on it in the past that you can look up if you want to learn a little bit more. But what's special about this is there are currently, um, you know, the, the the primary area where Goose is considered to be, you know, authentically made is from the Seine Valley and then from the Piotin land or Pajotin land. And I've got, uh, there are nine breweries currently brewing Lambic, traditional Lambic, uh, in those regions, and of those nine, I have seven of them here, which I think is really kind of cool. Um, so I have Jardin, Dreyfontein, Bone, De Troc, Timmermans, Cantillon, and Lindemans. The other two, which I don't have, are Mort Subit and Bellevue. Uh, I've never had Bellevue's before. It, it, neither of those two are available in the States in general. And there are a couple other uh, lambics that are made in areas of Belgium that aren't uh, either the Pajotin land or the Seine Valley. The two that come to mind for me are the uh, Saint Louis Fon tradition, and I believe Bakor makes a goose as well. But we're dealing with you know what's considered to be the classic region. Uh, a little bit about these beers. They are spontaneously fermented, which means that they are not inoculated with yeast. If you watched the Degard episode that we recently shot, very much the same way. They've got these cool ships and whatever, you know, micro, microflora is in the atmosphere at the time is what actually gets fermentation started. And then they're transferred and fermented in uh, wooden vessels which are loaded with these same micro, micro flora and continue to develop the beer and ferment the beer. Uh, because unlike traditional brewer's yeast, which ha serves a very specific purpose and is just essentially trained and it has been domesticated to do a, a, a certain job at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time with a certain result every single time, this is a wild card here. So what happens is rather than a single yeast, you might have, I mean, I, I've heard, you know, 30, 40 more different types of yeasts. Some of them are brewer's yeast, some of them are wild Britannomyces yeast, and in addition to that, there's a lot of bacteria going on in there as well that offer flavors and create acid. Uh, the majority of the acidity and sourness that comes from beer doesn't come from yeast. It comes from bacteria, primarily uh, acetobacter, which you have to be very, very careful about, but but for lambic, you're getting it from lactobacillus and pediococcus. And what you want is a little bit of acetic acid, but, but really what you want is, is lactic acid. And that combined with some of these really intense and bizarre at times flavors that the Britannomyces yeast can create um, can be these wonderful, wonderful beers. Uh, Goose is uh, defined as a blend of three years of lambic, one, two, and three-year-old lambic. Um, and then they are, I don't know if they must be, but then they are then also conditioned usually for another year. Uh, what happens is, you know, the two and three-year lambic really don't have any more residual sugars. All the sugar has already been eat, eaten up by the yeast and bacteria. And that young lambic uh, kind of gets it going again and, and it essentially, you know, one, it carbonates uh, the beer as well. So. Enough about that. This is going to take a little while, so I'm going to just kind of go through it. Oh, these are blind. I'm doing these blind. You may not be able to see, but I just have numbers here. I lift them up and show you, but underneath is the beer. So this is not the order necessarily that I will be drinking them in. I'm doing, I can't hold it up and show you because the back has the brewery on it, but um, yeah, if you can see right there, these like little 
pink pieces of paper have uh, the, a number and the brewery underneath it. And I had Stephen, who works here at the store, set this up for me. So I don't have any idea what goose I'm going to be tasting because there's a lot of these ones that are you know whales bro and it's uh you know they've, they've got a reputation and really no matter who you are that's going to seep in and it's going to affect what you're tasting so I like to do blind tastings for just that reason um you know candy on everyone goes crazy about so let's put it out there and see now I have not had any of these gooses in in quite a while so uh, and also, my flavor memory is not the best. I, I'm not like some people who can taste a beer years later and be like, that spells too hearted. That's not just how I, I work. So I'm pretty sure that you know maybe I'll try to guess, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do well. But I will put them in, try to put them in my favorites, maybe section them off. Um, there's seven of them, so it's gonna be hard to sit here and be like, well, which one's four and which one's five? So, whatever you do. So, uh, I've got them one through seven this way. So that's the order I'm going to taste them. But remember, what I'm tasting is not this necessar necessarily this order. So, okay, first one, uh, really brilliantly clear. Uh, they all look relatively similar. So unless there's something that really is jumping out in terms of appearance. Um, I'll, I'll kind of brush past that after this one. So really clear golden color. I mean, honestly, it could look like a pale ale or maybe even like a, a Dortmunder lager or a lager with just a little bit of a golden color to it. Um, it does have a little bit of a nice white film of carbonation. Uh, oftentimes these are very highly carbonated styles because of that re-fermentation in the bottle uh, with the sugar being provided by the younger Lambic. All right. And right off the bat, I'm getting exactly what I love about these beers, and that's the unbelievable complexity. Um, I get so much stone fruit from these beers. I get so much peach and apricot, um, like lighter stone fruit. I'm getting lemon as well. Um, some earthy, dusty hay. Um, a hint of maybe just a touch of, touch of funkier stuff, but, but really not much. It, it's mainly stone fruit, lemon, and hay here. Mm. Bone dry, very tart. Your mouth just starts to water from all the acid uh, here. Mm. Fairly clean for a lambic. Very lemony with some unripe like apricot in there as well. And a little kind of dusty, dirty hay in there as well. Kind of like, you know, some of that, that really like light, almost gray colored dust that just hasn't seen water in a while. Um, at least that's, you know, what my mind's eye mm. sees. So. Um, Really nice, uh, piercingly sour as well. Um, it's not face sucking, but the, the, the sourness just kind of pierces through and it's very clean, very lemony and lactic. Lactic acid is very similar in flavor to citrus acid, citric acid to me anyway. So very nice. Um, okay, this one as well, maybe a hair darker and just a little bit less carbonated. This one has more stone fruit as well, but a little bit maybe darker, maybe some plum there as well. Some um, like aged white wine notes to it, a little oaky, maybe a little bit of like a, uh, a lightly oaked white wine, a hint of an oxidative note, a little age on this one. The flavors are there, but it's it's um, like behind this like sheet of of oak and a little bit of these aged white wines. Some of those oxidative like uh, orange wines, I think they call them. If you've ever had some of those, some you know, sherry's going too far, but you're just starting to get into that area. 
like this get better see Brittany now has been editing and putting up some of these videos so I she sits there and laughs at me when I do things like that so now I'm self-conscious so thank you Brittany this one has a little bit of like nerds to it as well like like ground up nerds which have that like fruity sour thing going on so like a little more strawberry oh well, plum was too much strawberry think of like a green strawberry with this one too a little more body definitely has nerds on the finish like strawberry nerds on the finish uh, a, a little bit more oak bigger mouthfeel like I was saying I'm gonna write notes I'm writing piercing lemon and clean and on this one I'm gonna say straw berry nerds and oak and white wine okay because I will forget almost instantly okay really nice one yeah, interesting okay uh, this one beautiful clarity as well uh, looks very similar to the first one uh, good, decent little wisp of, of uh, foam on the top there um, all right this one's got a little bit of zoo cage in there go into the zoo go into the lion room you know how that always smelled in there a little bit of that going on here a little bit of like uh, um, yeah like maybe urinal cake like a little um, grass um, or, or or maybe uh, if this was straw, I was saying hay, but this is more straw. This would be hay, so a little greener, fresher. Um, a little bit of the stone fruit muted. Uh, you're not getting that lemony zest note as well. Some oak, perhaps, or some wood in general. Um, a little bit of like a, a, a moldy fruit, maybe some moldy peach. comes alive a little bit on the tongue but kind of in false flat it's funny um the first thing they hate you is this kind of like zippy um hint of maybe uh there's a little more acidity to that moldy peach than you thought you thought it was going to be this sweet gross thing and uh it has almost like an unripe uh fruit aspect to it it's got this like little zing um decent carbonation some oak but then it just kind of like washes away um, fine not my favorite I'm gonna say zoo and and it's fast okay number four okay a little bit darker than the others uh, lambic as a beer is a essentially a, a wheat beer that's a uh, a lot of um, wheat in it, like uh, up to 30% or, or, or more. I think it has to be at least 30% actually. All right, this is the first of the, the Funkos, the funky funk ones. Um, this one's got a little bit of um, eraser in it, like those pink erasers. Um, peach fuzz, earth. Maybe a hint of wood, I don't know. Maybe I'm contributing or attributing these these woody flavors to something that isn't wood, but to me, it, whether it's wood or not, it, it's what I'm getting from it. Most heavily carbonated. Kind of blows up, explodes in your mouth. Um, really nice. Um, that funk is backed with a lot of acid. Um, so it, it, it's lemon and funk. Um, it's it's got that peachy stone fruit thing <laughs> a 
really well balanced, a lot of Brett character, a lot of that earthiness, and then pushed even a little further into that kind of pencil eraser thing. Um, that stone fruit, everything I kind of want from it, earthiness, really great. Uh, I would say four is certainly my favorite so far. Number five, uh, lighter. Um, fairly clear, but maybe a hint of haze, maybe. Um, but certainly the lightest so far in color. Um, not a lot of head that can be kind of swirled up. Wow. Very different. Um, a little bit almost like tomato plant tea, like the leaves of a tomato plant. Um, Oh, um, a little dms -y, a little cooked peas in this one too. I don't know why, but that's what I'm getting. Um, maybe some graphite as well, some like um, mineral notes to it. <laughs> so yeah, this has this interesting like umami sour thing, just slight umami. Um, and minerals. Um, uh, fairly cl uh, clean from a, you know, funky earthy side. Um, so I'm going to say mineral, you know, pucker, and umami. Interesting. This one's quite different from the rest. Um, and I've never had this one before, ever. I've never had the Detroit Oud Goose. It just came into the States for the first time in years and years, so I'm very excited to have that one. Um, okay, six. Um, a little bit darker than uh, the previous one, which was quite light. A uh, good amount of head to it. You got that funk, you got that eraser. Um, you're almost getting into burnt tire or rubber. A rubbery nose to it, oh, uh, along with lemon and peach and hay. Reminds me kind of of number four. Also, nicely carbonated. Um, a lot of fruit flavor. It's got this interesting, like, chalky acidity that hits me at the same time, like acidity and chalk. Um, uh, um, so very funky. Um, this one also is um, a little bit. Um, oh my gosh, what's the what's the word? I always forget this word. Um, uh, astringent. It's a little bit astringent, almost like sucks the the dryness or the moisture out of your mouth. Funky astringent fruit. Plus. It's a good one. I like this one. Yeah. Nice. And last but not least, um, you know, typical color, maybe a little less uh, foam than average. This one has a green quality to it. Like maybe again some tomato leaf, but without that umami, without that kind of DMSE stuff that um, number five had. Not this one, but this glass. Um, lemon, uh, for sure. Nice, balanced. A little bit of malt flavor in this one, actually. Um, or a grain flavor, I should say. Um, sorry. Okay, so my two favorite are four and six. Um, I could probably pick one. If I had to guess, I'd say six is probably my favorite, followed by four. I do like these. Um, a lot. Um, five is kind of weird. Three is pretty good. Uh, 
I'm gonna go four and six, and then two and three are probably my next favorite, and then five and seven and one. And just because they're in that order, I'll just say this is my order. I mean, I literally don't know which one's which now. So, oh, yes, I do, because I can count. One, two, three, four. They're both really good. Four and six. No, essentially the same. Then two and three. Then five and seven and one. Okay, am I going, going to try to guess any of them? Sure, why not? I will say, um, I will say three. No, I will say four of Cantillon, Dry Fontaine, uh, maybe, oh, are those your Dan? I'll say Jardin is three. Strawberry Nerds. Piercing Lemon is Timmermans, I'm guessing. Malt Flavor Lemon and Peach. I'll go Troke. Uh, what do I have got? I've got Jardin. And see, one of these might be Jardin. Oh, no, three is Jardin. So Lindemans. Um, I'll say, I'm totally just guessing, guys. And what else do I have left? Timmermans, Troke, Lindemans, Jardin, Three Floyds, blah, 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 blah. And, oh, Bone, Bone. Okay, Bone, okay. Oh. <laughs> Literally the last one I just said Bone, okay. So let's see what number four was. That was Jardin, the funkiest one. I said one of those two might be Jardin. Um, so my favorite was the Jardin. Really fun. Then six was, I got that one right. I said Dry Fontaine, and it was Dry Fontaine. Cool. Two was the Cantillon. Okay, I said it was Bone was the last one. Uh, so then I of this guy. Cool. Uh, Cuvée Rene, I put next. I mean, if I get one right again, at this point it's bait, it's just luck, dumb luck. Then I like the troke, okay. And now I'll just rehash what these were before I go real quick. I have really no idea what those are anymore. Seven, bone, marriage parfait. And my least favorite was the Timmermans, which I said was the Timmermans. I did get that one right. Um, just because it's very, okay, so let's go through them. Not that there's anything wrong with this one. A little one note. If you like really sour, lemony, zesty things, that's gonna sock you in the face with sour. This is the one to go with. Um, the Detroque is what I said had that interesting malt flavor, lemon and uh, peach, I'm sorry, the, the bone, uh, marriage parfait. Um, the Detroque, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the Detroque um, had that minerality and the umami to it. I'd never had anything like that before. I probably should have guessed that that was the uh, Detroque. Um, the three, uh, this is the one that had a little bit of the, uh, the lion cage in there. Uh, the Cuvée Rene. The uh, Cantillon had the strawberry nerds with oak, a little bit of oxidative white wine. Very, very nice. Uh, funky astringent fruit. Uh, I like this one, the funkiest one. Um, and then this one's just a hint less funk than the Dry Fontaine. A little bit of that eraser, I said. Funky, peach, and sour. My favorite, the Jardin. Um, if you guys ever have a couple of these together, do them blind, you know? Who knows what your favorite is? Um, who knows what this is? Uh, I think this one, no, yeah, that's the, that's the bone. Um, there you have it, guys. I hope this was inform, uh, informal, uh, uh, informational for you. I hope you really liked it. Um, I know which one I'm going to go for my personal favorite thanks guys as always keep the comments coming uh i really appreciate it so much um until next time uh i'm chris quinn i've never ended it like this um and uh i've got some great beer to drink and hopefully you do too cheers